Hello, I'm Tan Kim. This talk is about a new TCP stack architecture for high performance content delivery. This work is a collaboration between KAIST and Harvard University. The demand for higher quality video streaming keeps on increasing, and especially during the pandemic, we have seen an explosive increase in video traffic. And the global video traffic is also expected to grow as well. Solving higher quality to broader population requires a lot of resources. So it is critical to have good CDN server performance for cost-effective operation. In typical CDN servers, CPU reads file contents from disk and then serve them to clients via network card. But then which, which hardware component is a performance bottleneck in CDN servers? About 10 years ago, uh, IO devices such as disk and network cards used to be a bottleneck, but Moore's law for CPU has ended and there has been a revolution in IO device capacity improvement. For example, uh, disk bandwidth has increased about uh, 10,000 of times and network card capacity has also increased about 400 times. But the the performance improvement of CPU is much smaller by a few orders of magnitude. If this trend persists, CPU is, got, CPU is likely to be a main performance bottleneck in CDN sub, modern CDN servers. To observe this, we did a simple experiment with Nginx HTTP video streaming server for 300 kilobyte video chunk delivery. We used four MVMEs and 100 gigabit per second network on Linux. It is a complete disk-bound workload. The first observation is that CPU cycles are 100% utilized. And the second observation is that more than 70% of CPU cycles are spent for data plane workload, such as file system operation, disk I.O., and network I.O. In contrast, the CPU cycle consumption for control plane is much smaller. Then, why is CPU a bottleneck for IO bound workload? This traces back to a very old assumption in operating system design. In old days, CPU was fast, but IO devices were slow. So we assume that CPU is rarely a bottleneck for IO bound workloads. And this results in CPU centric IO operations where or contents must be brought to main memory first before performing any other operations on it. For example, read, write, and even optimize operations like send the file copies the file contents into main memory first. But this old assumption does not hold anymore where IO devices are getting really fast, which makes CPU relatively slow. So the, the existing operating system make, creates a bottleneck in main memory. Then how do we avoid CPU bottleneck for IO bound workload? In this work, we see an opportunity in peer-to-peer -peer PCIe DMA. Instead of reading file contents from main memory, why not a network card fetches file contents directly from the disk using P2P DMA? And modern smart NICs uh, provides programmability so we can pre up. But what happens to TCP stack? Currently, the TCP stack is run on CPU, but wh where the TCP stack should run when a network card fetches file contents directly from the disk? As the first option, we can, we can place the TCP stack on the CPU side, but the problem is that we cannot create the TCP data packet on CPU because we don't have file contents on main memory anymore. The second option is to place the TCP stack on SmartNIC, but the hardware capacity of a SmartNIC is much slower. So the, when we run the light HTTPD on Bluefield 2 SmartNIC, the throughput is only about 4.9 times lower than on CPU. So our solution must be hybrid to exploit both host CPU and a smart NIC. We separate IO intensive data plane from TCP stack. The name of our system is IO TCP, a new split TCP stack architecture for content delivery. 
uh, the key idea here is to run is that the host CPU runs the control plane or control plane while we offload the data plane to smartly. The control plane refers to the operations that require low latency control decision, such as reliable data delivery, congestion control, flow control, and header generation. On the other hand, the data plane refers to the other operations that require high throughput data I.O., such as disk I.O. and data packet I.O. And the, the, the operations in the data plane are easily hardware Here is the overview of our system. We run an application on the host stack, and when the, when the application needs to do I.O. operations, it can choose to offload the, ex offload the execution of the I.O. operations to SmartNIC. That is, for file I.O. on the SmartNIC, the application calls offload open and offload write to read and send the file contents to clients. For the execution of offload APIs, the host stack sends a special command to SmartNIC stack for each API, and the SmartNIC stack performs corresponding I.O. operations. Here is the overall operation of an IoTCP-based IO web server. When the web server receives a request from client, it, it opens the corresponding file by running offload open. So the SmartNIC stack can open the file from disk using P2P DMA, and then it returns the metadata such as file size to the host stack so the, so the application can sense response header to client. Then when the application needs to send the response body, it calls offload write. So the host stack sends a send command to the SmartNIC stack, and the SmartNIC stack reads file contents from disk using P2P DMA, and then sends out the response body packet to client. Then, when the client sends an acknowledgement, the acknowledgement message bypasses the SmartNIC stack but arrives to the host stack for the execution of the control logic like reliable data delivery, congestion control, etc. There are there are four offload APIs in our offload commands in our system, but let me explain for the send command, which is the most important one. When the host stack sends a send command to, to the SmartNIC stack, it contains a virtual data packet with protocol headers only, and there is no actual file contents in the payload. But the host stack writes the file information like file ID, offset, and length. Then on receiving send command, the SmartNIC stack translates the file information on the payload, then read the file contents from the disk directly, and then sends out the real data packet to client using scatter I.O. And the SmartNIC stack can also, also exploit other standard network card offload features like TSO, checksum offloading, and TRS offloading. In implementing our system, we need to address two challenges to, in, in making TCP operations conform to the standard protocol. And the first challenge is about how to calculate accurate packet RTT despite of the disk delay on, on, on the SmartNIC stack. But for the time constraint, constraint, please refer to the paper for the details for the first challenge. And I will explain about the second challenge. The second challenge lies in how to handle packet retransmission. In our system, the control plane on the host stack handles the packet retransmission, but if we are not careful, it can be very inefficient because the SmartNIC stack can reread the same file contents from the disk again just for retransmission. To address this problem, we have the SmartNIC stack keep the file contents until it is acted by the other endpoint. So, when the host stack receives acknowledgments, it periodically informs the SmartNIC stack about it, so the SmartNIC stack can discard the file contents when they are act, really act. 
we implement our host stack by slightly modifying MTCP or user level TCP stack. And we implement our SmartNIC stack as a simple TPDK application. And we added four offload APIs, offload open, appstat, close, and write, which implement the function in the SmartNIC stack. And this these simple API sets allow us to port applications easily. For example, for porting Lite HTTPD server to IoTCP, we just needed about 10 lines of code modification. For the experimental setup, we use a server CPU and two, two Bluefield 2 SmartNIC and four NVMe disks with 20 gigabit per second throughput each. Uh, due to the weak memory bandwidth of Bluefield 2 SmartNIC, only uh, one, one Bluefield SmartNIC can fully saturate only two, two NVMe disks. So we use two NVMe disks per one SmartNIC here. So the maximum throughput is limited to 80 gigabit per second. And we compared our system to two baselines Light HTTPD on Linux TCP with send file and Atlas. Atlas is an academic web server on kernel bypass TCP stack with raw disk access in user level. But please note that it is not an apple to apple comparison with Atlas because uh, Atlas can, the current version of Atlas can only serve hardwired HTTP messages and it can misbehaves at high load. And the, sec the second point is that Atlas, Atlas and Lin uh, Linux TCP has different bottleneck points with our system. Our system, the bottleneck point of our system depends on the memory bandwidth of SmartNIC so far, but the, this CPU-centric systems depend on CPU. For plain text 500 kilobyte video file chunks, Linux TCP cannot saturate four MVMEs even with 10 CPU cores. And Atlas can reach the maximum throughput with only four host CPU cores. And our system needs only one host CPU core to saturate four MVMEs. We can say that Atlas works really well here because the workload size fits in CPU cache size. But, but when it comes to TRS traffic, which is pretty much standard these days, the benefit of Atlas goes away because CPU is overloaded. Actually, it is inevitable to see such performance degradation in CPU-centric systems when the workload size exceeds the CPU cache size. In contrast, our system can still reach the maximum throughput with only one host CPU core because our system can, can leverage the hardware crypto support in network card effectively. Actually, the performance improvement of our system is much higher than that of simply adding the processing power of host CPU and the SmartNIC. That's because the separation of control plane and data plane can mitigate the cache contention for control logic. And the less LSE misses in control logic can accelerate the ex execution time of control logic, which results in shorter end-to-end -end RTT and faster increase of congestion window size. To demonstrate our analysis, we, we measured the Linux TCP with extra delay to, to emulate the LSE misses, and we found that even with only 20 microseconds of extra delay, the performance degrades significantly. And <clears throat> one might suspect that our system has additional overheads because the host stack needs to communicate with network network card stack for packet transmission. And that is true, so we did a simple experiment to that, that can magnify the overhead. And as depicted on the left side, 
When the number of connections are small like one or two, Linux TCP can outperform our system. But as long as the number of connections is four or larger, our system outperforms Linux TCP. And on the right side, uh, when, we deal with, when we deal with smaller fire sizes like 10 kilobyte fires, the similar trend happens. You can say that in typical CDN servers where a server serves a lot of clients, our system, the benefit of our system outweighs the, the overhead. In summary, we observed that the server class CPU is getting more expensive while IO devices are getting really fast. So we present IO TCP, a new split TCP stack architecture for content delivery that allows harnessing IO device capacity more efficiently with little CPU cycle consumption. And our prototype shows that one requires only a single host CPU core to to handle 80 gigabit per second disk bound workload. And although the current bottleneck lies in smartening memory bandwidth, the smartness with higher memory bandwidth will improve the throughput even more. For example, Bluefield 3 will achieve more than, achieve about 140 gigabit per second per one smartness. And we want to emphasize that the, con the co the SmartNIC logic of our system is easily hardware-risable, so they can be made faster. And the design of our system is general enough, so we can apply our system to other related protocols like Quick. Thank you for listening, and I'll be happy to answer any questions.